have to stop on there, you know. There's a bed upstairs, even if you didn't want to get in with me. I'll go and get us some breakfast. Yeah. Not for me. Well, it's no trouble done. It won't take me five minutes. I said no. Thanks, but no. I'm not stopping. Well, a cup of tea, then. I mean, that won't hurt you, will it? Not to commit you to anything. Don, I'm not going to poison you. All right, all right. I'll have a cup of tea. Still there. Eh? Don, I say he's still there. His car's still there. He wants to stop the night, sir. Oh, well, that Miss Fancy piece has jumped him out. Sent him home with his tail between his legs. I'd give him a good hiding if it were mine. Who is she? How the hell do I know? I don't know. I bet you do know. I bet you've known all the time, you. Because you all stick together. You all leg each other on. Look, I know nothing, me. A man of your age. It's pathetic. And you're all kidding yourselves, you know, because you're all too old to play away. You could hardly play at home, you, so how could you manage to play away? What are you going on at me for? This one, I'll be watching you. First time I've seen the signs you've been at it. I won't bother taking you to the vet. I'll do it myself with two bricks out of our backyard. Is this the finish then, Don? Is this how it ends? Can't we have one more try, Don? I'm willing. Please think about it, Don. I have. Well, think about it some more, then. All right, all right, I'll think about it. It won't make anything different, will it? Look, I'll tell you what. Come back tonight for a bit of dinner. I'll make you a pie. Oh, for goodness sake, Harvey, I'm not a little lad. I can't do anything right. I can't say anything right, Don. Look, all right, I'll... I'll, I'll come back later. I, not for dinner, but I'll, I'll come back tonight. I'll call in, see how you are. Right, then. There must be something wrong because they've been having a blazing row, you know. Well, that means nothing. They're always rowing. Ah, but she hasn't shown yet. He went out of here this morning with a face on him like a well smacked backside, Betty. Well, if there is some us, it'll be Alec up to one of his dodges. Sit down, sit down. Mm. Pardon your face with sunshine. And the great figured smell. Not that row. Um, Betty. Yes. Betty, love a, a little job for you. Oh, I. Aye. Uh, uh, dear, dear stuff with this one. Won't you? Eh? <laughs> I'd like a nice little turkey dinner with all the trimmings for about seven o'clock tonight. You got a company coming, have you? No, 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 no. It's it's just me and Bet, just the two of us. A oh. nice, uh, nice, cosy little dinner. Oh. You know. <laughs> uh, I've got a job for you and all this. Now you uh, you know about uh, women's scent and all that stuff, don't you? Nip down to that shop in the precinct, will you, and get me uh, a bottle of something for Bet. Here's twenty pounds. No, you better make it thirty. It's a Christmas present, you see. Uh, pardon, pardon me, boss, but you. Um, are you not being a bit previous here? turkey dinners, Christmas presents. I mean, have I been poorly? I, mean, I could have sworn it was only November. I know what the date is, Jack. All right, all right. As you're all here together, gathered in the one place, I may as well break the news to you. Thing is, I, I won't be here for Christmas. No, no. Well, unfortunately, owing to a business opportunity, I can't afford to turn down. Mm. I shall be away as from tomorrow, right through the festive season. Mm -hmm. Where are you going? I'm organising the live entertainment aboard a cruise ship, you know. And of course, it's a considerable job of work, you know, coping with the thousand and one contingencies that are bound to crop up. Still, somebody has to do it. So, while you're at home, enjoying yourself, you know, with your loved ones, tucking into your Christmas dinner, you know, opening the presents, exchanging kisses under the mistletoe, I shall be away on the high seas. Pulling a cracker. Eh? You left that one out, boss, the things you're going to miss at Christmas, you know. Naturally, of course, Bet's a little bit upset about it, as indeed I am. So that's why we're dining tonight, you know, so that I can enjoy the festivities I won't be here to share. And, of course, I rely on you, my trusty staff, to give Bet every support while I'm away. Liz, if you're nipped down sharpish, you can be back with that scent by opening time. Thank you. Carry on. Um, would you credit it? A cruise, and it's cracking on its hard graph. Hey. No wonder Bet's fed up. If I ain't got enough with that, turkeys. Don't forget, Betty. He wants stuffing. Well, there's no answer to that, is there? Right, come on, Wilsie O'Grady. Let's get you on. <laughs> um, what's this about Don Brennan? 
What about him? Well, from what Vera was saying in the Rovers last night, he's been a naughty boy. Not even Kevin heard her with And if Vera Dockwood heard it right in the first place. Yeah, well, I said that to Kevin. I can't see it though, can you? Well, you never know, I suppose. I mean, I've noticed the most unlikely people have the most amazing love life. Oh, well, I mean, I'm not saying that uh, Don Brennan's up to anything. I mean, well, I just don't know. You've gone on quiet, Gail. Well, like they say, least said, soonest mended. All right, then. Bye, say goodbye. Bye. Bye, Bye Rosie. Bye. You know, it's bound to get out now, you know, especially now Vera Duckworth knows. Yeah, well, I just don't want Ivy thinking it's me. Mm. Well, maybe they'll patch it up. Maybe. Well, I don't know. I suppose I thought Don had put up with anything. Maybe Ivy did, too. Well, yeah, she can't be easy to live with. Hey, listen to me making excuses for fellas. Yeah, because you know that Don's a nice fella. Ah, oh, yes, but we can't let things like that cloud our judgment, can we? We must remember, men are smart. Mm. Is uh, Bet not so well? Oh, no, 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 she's in the pink. Just thought we're not having seen her. Oh, well, she's uh, what they call recharging her batteries, that's all. Did she like the perfume? I've not given it to her yet. No, I'm waiting for the right moment. It's what they call timing. Can make or break a marriage, you know. You'll have to give Jim some coaching one of these days. Say we can, please, Jack. I'll put a paint in there for your man. No, 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 no. Just half for me, thanks. Want to be able to see straight this afternoon, no? <laughs> You're just frightened Mike Baldwin will come in here and smell your breath. <laughs> no, so I am man. not. I will never see the guy anyway. Harry, Hello, love. Yeah. Hello, uh, Valkyrie and Toilet, love, please. Coming up. Now then, here we are. Uh, do you know, when you walk into this bar, Bet, it's like somebody switched a light on. No, 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 it's not, not just me. All the customers feel it. Well, they won't feel it today, because I'm staying switched off. How do you mean? I mean, I'm not doing a stroke. You can all get on with it. Rita, can I come round there and join you? Of course you can, love. What are you having? Uh, G and T. No, put your money away. They're on the house today. And make them doubles. Come on, love, let's sit down. Yes, you uh, you sit down, love. I'll bring your drinks over. Hey, how do you fancy going out somewhere for a nice long boozy lunch? Oh, I'd love to, but I can't. Go on, don't fight it. No, if I'm not back in that cabin in one hour precisely, maybe it'll let tracker dogs out from me. All right, then we'll have lunch here. And I'll tell you what a devious conniving rat bag I was daft enough to marry. I wasn't expecting you. You said you weren't coming back so tonight. Yeah, 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 and I did. And I, I, I did, did, but I've been doing what you asked me to do. Thinking. And, and what I think is, what's the use of dragging it out? How do you mean? Well, I'm only putting off saying what I have to say. Let's face it, Ivy. We've had it, you and me. Now, the sooner we face that, the better. For both of us. I'm back here, struggling with the Christmas rush. He'll be lying on his back on a Sunday, tanning his fat little hairy chest. Well, he's always had a gift for it, Auntie. He's always had the knack, Auntie, of being the fourth fella when there were only three shovels. What's name at boat, anyway? Titanic would be my choice. I forget. He did tell me, but name's not stuck. Weren't a boat I'd ever heard of. No, well, I didn't think it'd be one of them marvellous jobs like QE or whatever. I mean, not if Alex provided him to. I mean, I can say this bit, because I was once on his books myself, weren't I? But he's never really had any top turns, has he? Only me. Oh, well, present couldn't be accepted. Now, I mean, this is outside my experience, so I'm guessing. But I'll bet he's working most of the time. And cleaning out the elephant or the equivalent. And when he's not working, he'll be kept below stairs. Or below decks with rest at flunkies. Hey, are you sticking up for him? No, I just understand him. I mean, he's frustrated in Presaro. He's always wanted to be Bernard Delphon. You are sticking up for him. Oh, I must say he's gone up in my estimation since he married you, though. Mind you, there are plenty of scope. Till then, he registered an out on my personal tapometer. Hey, bet I'm going to have to go. I mean, maybe he'll start staging a mutiny. Well, I hope his little band of entertainers turns mutinous on him. I hope they do a Captain Bly on him. 
I hope they cast him adrift on a rubber duck. You see, I know what I want, Dan. I want us to stay together. We're married, and to me that means staying with it no matter what. I'll tell you what I think. I think the main reason you want us to stay together above all else is so that you can hold your head up in front of neighbours. That's not fair, darling. It's not right either. You may not know it yourself, but deep down, I reckon that's what it's all about for you. And I'm telling you it's not. I don't lie to you, Don. All right, I nag you, but I don't lie to you. I'll give you that, you're honest. But you kid yourself, Addy. Oh, yes, you do. What good is this marriage to you? Eh? What do you get out of it? Not, as far as I can see. Because for last, I don't know, it seems like forever, for months you've been a, a miserable, ratty, unhappy woman, murdered to live with. I know, I know I have. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. You're not happily married, are you? And I'm... I don't know what it should be either. I'm not giving you whatever it is you need. Otherwise, you, you wouldn't be like that, would you? No. Don't know. It's not you that's made me unhappy, love. You're a tower of strength, you are. The trouble is, I've just taken it for granted. I know I have. But you've not made me unhappy, Don. I've made myself unhappy. I want you, Don. Tell with the neighbours. I want you. And I wish you'd believe me. So what's the answer, eh? What are you telling me? Start all over again? Is that it? Yes. Now you're telling me things will be different this time, that you'll be different. Because that's wishful thinking, Ivy. People can't be different from what they are. What they're born, that's what they stop. Well... I won't promise to be different then, but I promise I'll be more like I used to be when we first got married. We were happy then, Don. We were. You know we were. <coughs> You've not washed up, I know, Claire. Now, don't start. I've not been home that long. I've got to be back out past five. You don't know what work is, you. A woman's work's never finished. I see his car still out there. Aye, so I thought I might give him a knock and see if he fancied a quiet place. Hey, you leave him alone. Leave him to Ivy to sort out. Hey, little bit of news for you. Was I not telling you that Bet and Malado were falling out, eh? You know why? Why? He's only going away tomorrow, cruising on a ship for six weeks. He's never. He is, he is blazing mad. Men, eh? There's Don Brennan with his bit on the side. Now, Alec Gilroy sloping off on a cruise. You know, you swined a lot of you. What are you marrying a bee for? Because you're all the flame insane. No, don't go on at me. I am not got a bird on the side. I am not going on a pleasure cruise. No. Only because you're not cut out for it. Unless it's calm. You go all queasy and start moaning and groaning and wishing you were dead. And you're no good on boats, neither. <laughs> <laughs> That was very nice. But then I always did enjoy your cooking. You're hygienic too. Give me that. Have you had all you wanted? In the way of food, yes. Well, I'm sorry, I'm afraid that's always supply. And a nice friendly welcome. I hope you're not planning on sitting there all day. I mean, haven't you got a home to go to? Yeah, I have as a matter of fact. I've acquired a nice little flat in the Keys, opposite the water from where we had ours. You remember that, I'm sure. Anyway, look, uh, I've had these new cards printed with my phone number on them. Ring any time you want anything. See ya. I'm not blaming you, Dan. I want you to understand that. It was my fault. It's never 100% one way, Ivy. I'm not claiming that it is. No, no, it's me, love. Because I know you. you you're a decent, straight man. You... You believe in your marriage vows, the same as I do. Yeah, well, I did do them. Yeah, of course you did, because that's what you were brought up to. You're not the sort of man that gets married one day and divorced the next. I never mentioned divorce, Avi. I have no desire to get married again. Oh, Don, it can't be wrong to try again. I mean, if we both meant what we said when we got wed. Yeah, well, 
I meant it. I suppose I believe that. It's going to have to do his part and all that. Look, tell me honestly, Ivy. Is that what you really want? To try to give it a go? Yes, it is, Dan. I want you. I want to make it best for both of us. <sighs> we'll give it a go, then. Could I, uh, could I just ask you one thing then? Don, can we uh, sell this house and move away? You serious? No. It's too much of the past in here for me that's been the trouble. Bert, Brian, too many memories lying heavy on me. And now this. I, uh, I just think it'd be better if, if we moved into another house. Yeah, well, they say right, yeah. All right, all right, we'll move. That's what you want. It's fine with me. Right, I'll, um, I'll get some tea. Hey. My word, Betty, that's wonderful. Well, I hope you enjoy it, love. Oh, thank you, love. I'm having none of it. I'll tell you that now. Uh, all right, Betty. Le leave it with me, love. Uh, thank you very much. It'll be all right. I mean it, Alec. This is all a waste of time. Come on, Bet. I mean, Betty's gone to a lot of trouble. I don't want to eat my Christmas dinner on November the 20th. I want to eat it on Christmas Day with you, not on my own. Don't you think that's what I want? I don't want to be on the high seas, thousands of miles away from you. Yes, you do, because that's what you're doing. And you always do exactly what you want. You talk as though it's pleasure. It's no pleasure to me to be away from home, away from you, love. So, all right. Nobody's making you go. Don't go. You don't seem to grasp, dear, that I'm doing it for us. I mean, this this is the opening, isn't it? The door of opportunity's ajar at last, and I'm going to kick it wide open. This could be the start of things, Bet. Future years, I could be laying on entertainment for a whole fleet of liners. We could get shut of this place. I can see it now, sailing off into the sunset, first class. And instead of seagulls, pigs will be flying overhead. There you go. There you go again. Any time I have a bit of vision, any time I want to do something special for us, you have to knock me down, belittle me. All I can see is this. While I'm back here struggling with the busiest trade of the year, you're going off into the sunshine. There won't be any sunshine, will there? I'll be working my wife fronts off, trying to make a place in the sun for both of us. You'll be here with your friends, the trusty staff in the comfort of your own home. I'll be sharing some grotty cabin with one of the acts. Pound to a penny, it'll be a fellow with sweaty feet who never stops snoring. Aye, we'll see how you like it. At least I'll get a break from that. What hurts me is, do you think I'm enjoying myself? How can I enjoy myself, Bet, without you, eh? Anyway, here. Here's your present. I'm trying to show you how much I'll miss you. Hey, Alec, you've got some funny ways of showing it. Ding dong merrily on I. Oh, hear the church bells ringing. Ding dong merrily on I. Now they're playing at. Well, I just thought I'd do some Christmas carols, help the turkey dinner go down, you know. Here. I've got some plastic mistletoe. Get back in the bar, you lunatic. I want it, eh? I told you, didn't I? <laughs> hey, Dad, do you like turkey sandwiches, love? Yeah, sure. Why? Well, I think we're going to be having them on our menu for the next week or two. <laughs> well, cheers, Phyllis. What's this here about a new girlfriend? Oh, my, the jungle drums must have been red up. I was right, wasn't I, when I told you? 
when Step walked out, I said there's plenty more fish in the sea. Yes, mind you, to catch anything, you've got to have the proper tackle. I hear she's a solicitor. That's right. She won't do you any good, will she? Eh? She'll be a career girl, won't she? What you need is someone that'll stay at home and make babies. Is that it, Ken? That's uh, two pound and nine pounds. Two pound and nine pounds. Thanks so much. Thank you. Um, I was wondering if you fancied the pictures at all. When? Uh, well, not tonight. I've got a stack of marking a mile high tomorrow. Fine. Yeah, there's this film called Misery. Sounds like the story of my life. Oh, yeah, I've heard a lot about that. It's about this chap in the power of a fiendish woman. That is the story of my life. <laughs> Good evening, my sweet. You look delightful this evening. I must be due for an eye test. Hey, now, listen, you. Yeah, look, Jose, I might have a word or two to say to Don Now, Brennan. Vera, don't start. You'll only make it worse. Evening, Vera, and evening, Ivy. Evening, Don. Uh, uh, evening. Excuse me, is it? Uh, uh, yes, I'll sit there. Yeah, go on, I'll bring them over. Pile of bits, Jack, and right. half long. Hey, listen, I'll have a go at him if you want. Uh, no, Vera, there's no need now. Oh, I'll take it his back, then. He's not leaving now. Well, uh, we both leave you there. We're going to sell out and find somewhere new. Where? I don't know yet. We... That's what we're going to do. Why don't you have a nice plate of turkey? Because I'm not mad about turkey at the best of times. And this is not one of them. What is all this in aid of, Alec? What is it you're after? Well, you know what I'm after. When I leave tomorrow, I want to... You understand what I'm doing. I do. Only too well. I want to go on this, yes, mission. Mission to prosperity. With your love, your blessing and your support. We don't want to be falling out, do we? Not on me last night. Oh. I see what you're after. You're hoping for a sailor's farewell. Well, you've had that, sunshine. I'm sleeping in the spare room tonight. As far as I'm concerned, you will be sailing on your maiden voyage. Colombo investigates some very funny goings-on in the cosmetics industry this afternoon at three. Next on Plus, we're off to Beckendale.